Hello and welcome to the ninth video in this series for Beginners Programming Python 3. In this video we're going to carry on from where we left off in the previous video with our wonderful guessing game. Now when I, in learning many different languages, when I first come across something like this, I always have the question, especially when I first started programming, well, what happens if the user doesn't enter a number? And let's have a look at our program here. If I run now and put my guess in as hello, I get something, well, I get a horrible looking message when you first start programming. I get a value error. I'm told that in line 14, that the user guess equals int brackets user guess has had something called a value error. And it's telling me that, okay, the message is, looks a little bit cryptic, but it's telling me that it's not able to convert hello into an integer. And that type of error is a value error. And Python has lots of different types of errors. You can find them in the library and we'll cover some of the main ones in this course. I wanted, however, to do in this video was just have a quick look at how we might deal with this error. And I'm going to look at two ways. The first one is what will be called the simple way, I guess, which is to use part of the functionality of the string class to be able to actually identify whether the user has entered a number or not. And the next thing I want to do is a little bit more advanced, but I think it's good to do it very early on, is actually use something called try and accept to deal with an error, in this case, our value error. So let's do the first version first. If we look at my program here, you can see that the problem line is line 14. If the user hasn't, remember if the user enters Q, we break out of our infinite loop. But now before we try and convert the user guess to an integer, what we want to do is say, if the string isn't an integer, then we'll print something saying, no, we need an integer and then continue. So don't execute any of the remaining code just go to the next loop and ask for a guess again. The question is how can we identify whether the user has really entered an integer or not? If I go to the uh, standard library in Python, you remember we've been to string class before. Down in the string method section here, there's a, me a method called is digit. And here it says return true if all characters in the string are digits and there's at least one character. And that's exactly what we need. So let's go back to our code and just go back to the console. Now I'm going to clear the console and open up the Python interpreter quickly. I'm going to make a new variable called s for our string. And I'm going to make s, let's say, 34. And now if I look at the, the result of s and is digit, which is part of the functionality of the string class, I get true. This is exactly what we want. Let's make s uh, blank, so nothing inside and execute s is digit, I get false. And let's just check decimals as well while we're at it. So let's make s 3.4 in this case, and we also get false. So is digit is the exact function we need to test whether the user has actually entered a whole number or not. So I'm just going to, or an integer. So I'm just going to exit and clear the screen. And let's adjust our code and put an if in there to deal with whether the user has entered a number or not. So now we've adjusted our program and now we're saying if is digit is false, so it's not uh, an integer, we'll ask for an integer and then continue, which means we won't execute any of the remaining code in the while loop. We'll go back and ask for input again. So let's just check this working in the console. So now I'll enter hello again and now it says please enter an integer and enter your guess. So things are a lot better. So that's a relatively simple way of handling the user's input, but I want to show you another way. If I just remove the code again and rerun the program just as a reminder and enter some text, remember I got this value error here. So how can we deal with this? And you'll find in your code a lot that, particularly with user input and dealing maybe with stuff you've loaded from files and unexpected data and things like this, you might well have something in there that you're not expecting to have. Maybe you're looking at dates and something you get is a null or empty and it isn't read properly. You'll get some kind of error. Now inside the documentation of Python, these errors are known as exceptions. And there's a section here in the documentation on how to handle these exceptions. Now, when you've just started programming, this can look really, really confusing, but it, but it isn't. You need to just read the documentation a little bit. And I just want to show a really basic example now in this program as an introduction to it. And in fact, rather handily, the documentation has all exactly the same example that we will be looking at in our program. The way exceptions work is we do something called a try and then we try and run our code inside as part of the try code block after this double point and it's indented. And if we get an exception like we did in our program, we got this value error. I'll just go back to the console. We have a value error here. If that occurs, then this statement here, so all the code that's indented after the double point will then be executed. The tricky thing with Python is you need to know what type of error 
is going to be raised. And there are various types of errors. Here you can see a runtime error, a type error, a name error. There are lots of different types. I think somewhere there was a link in a documentation. There's built-in exceptions here. Um, the list of types and their meanings. There's a link to it here. We know from the error we saw in the console, our type is a value error. And the code we're going to put is actually almost exactly the same as this code here. I also want to print the error. And there's a nice example down here where in the case of an OS error, as error here. So the error is represented by this alias ERR here, and then it gets printed then here uh, to the console. So I'm going to do something very, very similar to that than in our code to try and handle the case where uh, the user doesn't input an integer. So let's first of all, let's clear the screen in the console and let's update our code. So what we want to do is we want to try and execute this line here. It was the one that gave us the value error. If it works, all is good. Our user guess is, store, user guess is stored. But if it doesn't work, then we're going to raise our value error and we'll call this ERR just as in the documentation. And then I'm going to print not a number. And let's also print the error. And in the case that it wasn't entered, then we want to continue and go on to the next loop just as we did with is digit. So let's run this program then. And now let's enter hello. And now you see I get not a number, invalid literal for int with base 10. Hello is the error, but it doesn't crash. It doesn't exit the program. It's handled our error. We asked it to handle a value error. So it goes around and tries to get our guess. So now let's enter the guess 10, which is a number. And we get the rest of the code executing with the wrong guess. My number is lower than 10. And we know it's eight. So we'll take two guesses and exit. So there you can see how we handle errors in Python. There's one more thing you can do in Python, and that is add something called a finally, which is a block of code that will be executed if the try was okay, successful, there was no error, or also in the case of an error. So let's print here anyway, and see how this works. Because even though we've got a continue in the accept, we'll still execute the block in the finally before continuing. So let's have a look at this. I'll put hello again. And now we get not a number again, error invalid literal. And we still, even though we've got the continue here, still executed the code in this finally block before then returning and asking for a new guess from the user. So finally can be very useful as some code that even in the case of an error, you want to execute anyway um, before carrying on with the rest of your programs. So it might be some code that needs to be inside the try and the accept, irrespective of what happens. So that's it then for this video. It's quite early thing to do, especially if you first started programming to introduce try and accept. But I think it's uh, very useful to understand that or to see it's not as complicated as I often thought of. There's a lot of documentation on it and the errors. And it's a very nice, clean way of handling issues inside your program and also being able to print to yourself um, messages to tell you that things maybe in your program are not working quite as you expect them to. Any problems with that or any questions or things unclear, feel free please to leave a comment uh, below the video. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching and see you in the next one.